Welcome to my new channel, Unfit in the Forest, where we choose to put ourselves in situations our bodies just aren't prepared for. G'day viewers and welcome to another video from Alex Does DIY. My name is Alex and we're off on another hiking and camping adventure, number two in the series. Super excited, super pumped. Uh, we're at Lagoon Pinch parking area at the moment, Barrington Tops National Park, the southern end of the park in New South Wales, and we're doing the Corker Track up to Carey's Peak. You can find a spot to camp up there for the night, just the one night and um yeah super excited so thanks for watching thanks also to everyone that watched the first camp and uh video come out a couple of weeks ago special mention to trev from trev's blog really appreciate it mate your kind words first comment on the video much appreciated and to those of you and if you want to check out trev's channel it's uh look up trev's blog on youtube if you're into uh automotive restoration sheet metal um, fabrication and panel work and spray painting and all that sort of stuff um, doing some awesome work restoring on old Bedford um, love his channel really high quality production too a little bit better than my stuff but uh, yeah we'll get there so thanks Trev so yeah New South Wales Barrington Tops um, the hike we're about to do the Corker Track never done before super excited to give it a go um, goes for around about 10 k's goes up in elevation over that 10 k's of about a thousand meters as I understand it but from what I'm told only about the first three or four k's is uphill um, after that the next six or seven k's is all um, uphill so uh, I think we're in for a bit of self-torture to be honest uh, we'll see how we go pushing this nearly 50 year old uh, body of mine anyway weather wise is pretty good it's the beginning of July. We've had snow here uh, last week, but I'm not expecting any snow uh, today or tomorrow, um, possibly Saturday, but I'll be gone by then. Uh, the issue is gonna be wind. Uh, it's a little bit breezy at the moment. I have seen forecasts um, mentioning up to around 65 kilometers an hour so tonight. So that's gonna be interesting to see how we go with that. Anyway, all adds to the challenge and the fun, eh? If it was easy, everyone would do it. So anyway, I'm at the start of the track. So I want to get a crack on. It's around about 7.30 in the morning. And um, cool, super pumped to get, get on with this, uh, this hike and this walk. I'm just going to be taking it easy and hopefully get to the top by around midday. All right, reality check. So I'm probably only a kilometer in. And already the mine's starting to you know, work its tricks, sowing seeds of doubt. Have I bitten off more than I can chew? You know, obviously for someone fitter and more experienced, this isn't gonna be an issue to do a track like this, but oh, just to put things in perspective, you know, I'm 
a hair's breadth away from 50 carrying about 20 or 30 extra kilos around my waist not to mention my backpack and I only gave up smoking I think less than two months ago so This track is definitely kicking my ass at the moment, but I'm trying to put things in perspective. I'm determined not to give up. It's much about the personal challenge as anything else. You know, just taking it a little bit of a chunk at a time, you know. The, it's like that. That's the gradient. But you get in these sections that are like that for maybe about... 30 to 50 meters and then it goes flat for about two or three meters and then up again like this for another 30 to 50 meters so I'm just taking it a bite at a time I'm not in any hurry I'm not under a time crunch or anything so one step at a time I'm just not going to give up And as long as I continue on that path, I'll get there in the end. Bit of a roadblock. <laughs> Under or over. <laughs> She's no small tree. That would have come down with a bang. Alright, so the last maybe 500 metres of track of kind have not been quite as steep. Having to stop as often, I'm kind of still breathing. <laughs> so hopefully that's a good sign, though, as I round this corner. Oh, holy crap, that's the steepest section yet. Okay, I'm still going, haven't given up. Starting to see a bit of sun pop through here and getting some broken images of mountaintops through the trees. So, we're getting there. Not quite sure how long I've been going for now. Uh, it's got to be around an hour and a half, I would guess. Actually, maybe an hour and 45 minutes. Um, I really, it's time to get a watch. Um, but starting to get some, you can see behind me, breaks through the trees and an occasional, I don't know if you can see that actually, occasional views of mountains through the treetops. So, Still going up, but we're getting there. <laughs> I need to start playing the theme to Rocky in my in my mind. <laughs> Status update. Still climbing. Still breathing. Not giving up.
Just a foot wash station for uh, clean your boots, prevent from bringing in uh, any nasties on your boots that might harm the flora and fauna. And, uh, I'm glad I've got waterproof boots on. Oh, and we've got a signpost coming up. Let's check out what this says. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You bloody beauty. All right, we've reached the intersection with Wombat Creek, the Link Trail to Gloucester. There we go. So that's the road to, or the track to Carey's Peak, which is where I'm going. Um, I'm hoping to camp up that way, but Wombat Creek up that way is only 300 meters away, and uh, and I really want to get some water. So I'm down just to this amount. I've been pretty sparing. The other awesome part about this part of the track. It means I'm done about 8 k's, 8 k's, I think it's around about 11.30, so 4 hours to do those 8 k's, I think it's not too bad considering the terrain, um, so it's, it's, it says Wombat Creek 300 metres, so I've got a 10 litre water bladder in my bag that I want to fill up and then come back and then go to Carey's Peak to uh, stop there for the night, so and Carey's Peak, according to the map, um, up that way, is tears another two kilometres. So, oh, we're so close to being there. What an achievement. Never give up. Okay, we made it to Wombat Creek. That wasn't hard at all. Pretty cruisy from that intersection. Plenty of water here. Alright, so water sourced, I've got a belly full of water, I've filled my water bottle here, so it's a litre there, and I've chucked a uh, electrolyte tablet in there because I sweat like a pig, and uh, I've probably got a maybe six, seven litres of water in uh, my carry bag here, it should do me, that should do me. And, uh, so. I think there are other sources of water closer to um, the Kerry Hut. I'm just not exactly sure where they are, so I'd rather have this with me. All right, so now it's time to go back to that intersection, which really was only a couple of minutes to walk there. And um, I'm feeling pretty good. And that water was bloody cold. Uh, certainly nice and refreshing so I'm gonna head now to Kerry's hut fingers crossed there's no one stopped there I can set up my shelter okay I've made it to Kerry's hut Woo there it is it's funny how um, when you research these sorts of trips and you're looking online and you I look at photos and look at other people's videos on YouTube and all that sort of stuff. It's funny how um, different these places look when you actually get here. Yeah, it's kind of cool. If you look around, check it out. A bit of rubbish in here, which is a bit sad. What have we got inside? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could certainly stay here in an emergency. A few signatures on the wall, don't know if I'll have my own, but... The old fireplace. I've seen pictures of this place and it was leaning over like it was going to fall, but... Um, obviously it's been fixed up. If you want to uh, read what it's about, I'll you can pause the video and check that out. I don't know if you can read it. So, other than that, we've got a pretty sweet fire pit over here. Um, 
looks like there's plenty of firewood around so you continue further that way I'm assuming to get to uh, the actual Carey's Peak I'm not far, not sure how much further that is but um, so I'm going to choose a place to set up and um, I think get my shelter sorted then I can dump my gear inside the shelter and then uh, go for a wander up to the peak check that out All right, that's home. You enter through here, and um, tons of room inside. And uh, I'm just going to use my poncho as a ground sheet. I'll be able to stuff my gear in the corners and put my sleep mat and everything down the centre. That should do me anyway. The reason why I've gone for this setup rather than an open one is um, there's pretty much no chance of snow. There's, there's a bit of unexpected cloud cover coming over that wasn't forecast I don't know if that's going to hang around um, but I have seen forecasts of potentially 50 60 65 kilometer hour winds so I needed something that's going to uh, provide a bit of shelter from the wind and uh, this this should do that I hope <laughs> anyway and uh, it will provide me a completely enclosed environment for the cold conditions. All right, well, I officially made it to a Kerry's Peak. What a view. Check this out. bloody special. What an awesome country we live in, eh? We've got a bit of firewood there, not a massive amount. So let's do the whole pack review now. I made an absolute commitment when coming on this trip to go lightweight because lightweight is key. Lightweight is where it's at. Never mind this lugging around 25 kilos, 20 kilos or even 15 kilos because that's just going to weigh you down. So I went super lightweight, total survival only. If it's not required for survival, I don't want it, it's out of my pack. I only put in things the bare minimum. Never mind bare grills, call me bare minimum. All right? All I've got in here is what is needed to survive. If it was a luxury item, weighed too much, didn't add to my survivability, then it was out the door. It's not in my pack. So let's go through and see what I've got going. Let's start with the top. Apparently this part's called the brain. Total survivor. You need a map of the area. I haven't got a compass, of course, but you need a map. The bag, bag that I've got me dunny roll in and some wet wipes, because you need them, survival. Wet weather pants, because I don't want to get wet. The water filter, because I don't want to die. First aid kit, because if I want aid, I want it to come first. Paracord, gaffer tape, a light thermometer, so you know how freaking cold it is. 
17 degrees, that's not cold. And your PLB, your personal location beta, beacon, safety first. All right, put all this crap back in the top bit and then we'll go into the main compartment, show you what I got in there. Again, it was all about lightweight, ultra lightweight this time. Bare minute. Been here, I've just got my camera gear, uh, battery bank, bare batteries and a lighter. Obviously, essential. Clothes, because it's gonna get freaking cold tonight. So I've just got a soft shell jacket there, a down jacket to go underneath the soft shell jacket, and a freaking big bag of clothes, which you absolutely need, because remember, this is about survival. This is what's gonna keep you alive. I got these damn booties. They're pretty cool. Survival for your feet. Pot, stove, gas. Pretty easy. Because you're gonna have to eat. Bag of food, all dehydrated camp food. Apart from the hot chocolate, the mocha latte, half twist lemon berry coffee packet sachets and uh, and uh, a chocolate bar tea tower fire starting kit electrolytes because you don't want to die of electrical stuff harmonica because you don't want to die of um, lack of harmonica Sit in our main section. So let's go to the bottom section now. So again, we got the Cedar Summit sleeping bag liner. I went out and got myself a Cedar Summit pillow because the head has to survive while you're asleep. Nemo Tensor insulated sleep mat because the, the ground is going to be cold. This thing goes down to like minus nine or something. Once again, I've got the Hiker 200 Black Wolf. Now, predicted temperatures in this area tonight potentially going to get into the minus four fives this goes down to eight positive three is the lower limit so i've got two because three plus three three equals minus six or something I'm trying to put one inside the other i've still got me soul bibby and that's it that's going to keep me alive so as you can see the bare essentials. The clothing, I've got a set of merino wool thermals to chuck on, plus another flanny, a pair of tracky pants, a pair of a pair of fleece gloves. I've got a pair of fleece mittens that convert to gloves in case you need to convert to mittens from gloves. And then I've got these gloves because in a survival situation, you never know what type of glove you're gonna use for the right situation. Bring the right glove. That's survival in the Aussie bush. Okay, so it's about 2.30. Sleep system's in, ready to go. Um, but if you have a look, I don't know if you can make that out. We've got some pretty dark clouds coming through in this direction. That wind is pumping up there. And the sun's behind those clouds. The temperature already, it was 17 just half an hour ago. And we're now at 9, 9.2. So I'm glad I got the sleep set up done. If those clouds let go and don't blow over, we might have a bit of an issue with the fireplace. What I might do is just keep an eye on those clouds. And if that weather starts to break and we start to get some rain, I might just chuck some of this wood in the hut. Just keep it out of the rain. All right, so that initial cloud cover has passed. We've got a bit of sun again, which is nice. Um, there's a little bit more coming. I really don't think we're going to have any issues still with, uh, with rain or precipitation. I mean, look. I kind of was hoping for some snow. It certainly would have looked nice on the on the camera, and uh, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I'm not overly 
keen on the idea of sitting here in uh, really freezing cold rain, <laughs> but you know, again, just adds to the adventure. There's no issues there. Anyway, I'm still not ready to start the fire. It's about 3, 3.30. I was just in the uh, hut a minute ago. I didn't have the camera with me, but um, just checking it out. There's a visitor's book in there. So if you're ever up here, go in the hut. There's a visitor's book there. You can um, sign that and write a message. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna have something to eat. Um, I'm not gonna light the fire, as I said, so I'm just gonna do it on the gas stove. So I'll show you through my bag now. I know I was kind of joking before about all that lightweight stuff. I, re I really wish. My intention is to eventually get lightweight with that pack because, I mean, that track I walked up, um, check it out, it's called the Corker. Um, it's called the Corker because you're climbing up Corker Mountain. But man, is it a corker of a track. It's about, the uphill section is, well, it's all uphill. Every now and again, you get a little bit of flat towards the ends, but it just teases you. You come around a corner and you're like that again, and it plateaus and up and plateau and up and plateau for pretty much for 10 odd Ks. Yeah, I don't mind saying there were some doubts in my mind early on, and I had thoughts of turning around and giving it a miss. But I'm so stoked that I stuck it out and kept it up. I didn't give up, I didn't quit. You know, you forget the pain, but it's about remembering the wins, you know. Yeah, so I'm really pleased with myself for sticking that out. I know a lot of younger people and fitter people have probably jogged up there. I know I got I got blasted past by two young blokes who look like they're out on a bit of a day hike. Um, so for some people, you know, you probably breeze up there, but yeah, certainly for me it was a challenge, and you know, we all have our own individual battles. Um, yeah, anyway, enough of that. I'll get off the soapbox. So, I'm going to have something to eat. As I was saying, I did make some attempts to make my pack lightweight. One of those things is I didn't bring any sort of fancy juicy food. Um, the total weight of my food come in at under a kilo um, for today and tomorrow. So, it's all dehydrated stuff it's not the greatest but it, it will do me so I'll show you what I've got in my pack I did have a Snickers bar in there but I ate it already when I got when I got here because I was pretty hungry I'll show you what I've got and uh, so yeah no juicy steak scenes I know that kind of kicks the status quo of, uh, of the, the mold of these sorts of videos on YouTube you know you go hike and you go camp and you have a big juicy steak and you review a couple of uh, beers or whatever, yeah, not happening this time. So I'll show you what I've got, and um, I'm just going to cook something up. It's you just boil water and chuck it in. It's not really cooking. <clears throat> so this bag here, I actually made this uh, just before I come because obviously these dehydrated meals you pour hot water in, and uh, they have a tendency to cool down before they're fully cooked or whatever. So you know. This is, I just made this out of um, one of those car windscreen protector things. I saw someone chucking it out in a rubbish heap, so I grabbed it and I knocked this up. So I've got uh, a cup of porridge, another cup of porridge, so honey soy chicken, beef teriyaki, spag bog, all single serves. Oh, what else? Oh no, more food in here. Continental spinach ricotta parmesan rice and quinoa and there's me spoon two coffees and two hot chocolates There she is on the boil So check this uh, trick feature of me deluxe uh, insulation bag so I taped in a uh, An eye rivet at the top there. So if I want to hang it up I can hang it up, but I also included a couple of loops at the bottom here on either side chuck a stick in each one and she stands up <laughs> it's not going to fall over while you put your hot water in there unless I don't think it's going to fall over I haven't really tested it out yet
it's edible. All right, before it gets any darker, might as well get this fire going. Um, it's not too chilly. It's uh, 4.30. The sun continues to uh, set, as it tends to do every day. Um, there's still a fair bit of cloud cover that direction. So I thought I might as well get the fire going. It's not too cold yet. Uh, Thermometer is showing 7 degrees. Following uh, directions from Eric. From Eric off track. We've gone the old cotton makeup remover that I have dipped in wax. Anyway, they burn alright. I burnt one of these at home and tested it and it burnt fairly reasonably for a total of about eight and a half minutes. Anyway, so we'll see how we go. Fire. So status update, moon is out, I don't know if you can quite see that yet through the trees on the camera but I can I can pick it up. Uh, a lot of the cloud covers passed over us, there's still a few wispy clouds above, um, some really dark ominous clouds over in that direction, looking really purpley and pink really nice I don't know that what that I don't know what that means for me here but we'll find out obviously I've got in me casual attire got me like I said survival booties on <laughs> and uh, just enjoying the warmth of this fire would you rather be anywhere else All right, uh, not sure if you can see me. It's about 5.30. Fire's still cranking along there. Weather-wise, again, it's a little bit blowy, but nothing too bad. It seems to be really protected down here on the ground. It's all up higher. A um, little bit of cloud clearing. No rain. Temperature's about 6 degrees Celsius, so not too bad and a uh, nice bright moon tonight so um, I might uh, sign off there for the evening I think like I said I'm just gonna relax have me hot chockey I might have a feed later more of that dehydrated packet stuff and um, I guess I'll see you in the morning Waiting for the water to boil. Temperature showing 6.2 outside, so it's a good, almost two degrees colder or out here than it was inside the tarp, which is interesting. Um, certainly nothing. It's not too cold. Just making me a porridge in me backcountry bag. 
There's a bowl, boil in some water, and have a double strand coffee. Once I eat and have me coffee, I'm gonna uh, pack up and head out of here. It's, um, at least I know it's a downhill walk to get out, which uh, is all good. No uphill at all for 10 k's. So, it's been such an awesome trip. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I've been thinking to myself, it's you know one of definitely one of the more rewarding things I've done. Um, the big thing, just overcoming those internal internal demons and um, getting to the top of that mountain. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. The weather's been perfect. Those um, fireflies last night lasted for hours. <clears throat> I really wish. I did try and get it on the GoPro. If it worked, you, you'll probably see it, but um, yeah, there was actually turned out to be about a dozen trees that ring around the camp here, just around the campfire actually. None of the trees over there did it. But all these ones, all these ones up up here and around here, and this one up here as well, had so many fireflies in them. It, it was like fairy lights, they were like Christmas trees. It was so cool. And uh, every time cloud cover had come over, They'd, they'd stop glowing, they'd turn off. And as soon as that had clear, which was most of the night with a, with a really bright moon, um, they'd light back up again and start flashing and everything. It was really amazing to see. I've never seen anything like it. It was so cool. Loving this weather. It's good to see a, a difference in weather this morning with it being completely overcast and uh, compared to that yesterday's cloudless day. The temperature's dropping. It's gone right on six degrees now. I've dropped a little bit. It'd be really nice if there was a sudden change right before I leave and we got a little bit of snow. <laughs> That'd be cool. So I did mention how windy it was last night. I didn't hear this, but check that out. That is fresh as. That definitely come down last night, was not there like when I come through yesterday. That's one big sucker tree. You can see it over there. Okay, we've been going for an hour and a half, we're almost halfway there, halfway down. Just stopping for one last look at this amazingly beautiful view. Oh, I don't know if the camera picked that up. We've got eagles up here. Just 
See that was loud. How cool. What they are, they might be, um, they might actually be like I'm a bird expert, uh, peregrine falcons, maybe. I don't know, that was like a plane coming down. Anyway, back to the view. All right, here it is, that's the gate to the start of the track we're back to the beginning the time is 11.56 so that took me three hours there we go that's the corker track done five hours up three hours back that was such an awesome trip hope you enjoy the video Please like, please subscribe, please share, feel free to comment down below and stay tuned for the next camping adventure from Alex Does DIY. Cheers. <laughs> Clearly I left my brain home today. I realised I left my mobile phone sitting on the roof of the car. I was backtracking down this hill oh, to get my phone bloody do it all over again like I'm an expert it's the first time I've ever camped in a place like this it makes me laugh <laughs> you see so many people on YouTube you know giving advice and you just assume that they're an expert even someone who does you know many many videos on a certain subject you, do you really know if they're an expert or should you be trusting their opinion I don't know that I'd trust my opinion <laughs>